pilots. <laughs> Drain Man here, and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, we are going to learn how to flash firmware on an AM32 ESC. And you may ask, why is this important? What does it matter? Well, it matters because BL Heli 32 is now gone. It was closed source and the company is out of business. So you are going to probably be purchasing an AM32 ESC. Maybe you already have and that's why you're watching this or you are going to in the future and you're going to be thankful for this video. If you do have BL Heli S. Keep this in mind. There's a 8-bit and a 32-bit ESC in the world of BL Heli. So if you have a 32-bit dead gone bye-bye, okay? If you have that ESC and it's still working, keep using it. Don't stop. Don't touch it. Don't flash it. Don't do anything. If you're stuck in a rock and a hard place and you need to flash it, well, there is some workarounds. You'll need to actually change the bootloader in the microcontroller, which can be a lengthy process. You're going to need a, a flashing device, and you're going to need to uh, get in there and, and, and touch the pins that are connected to the MCU. It's, it's a whole thing, but you're going to have to change the bootloader on the microcontroller units inside of the ESE. Not a big deal, but it is a lengthy process. Again, let me know if you guys want us to get into that, because we can do that in a later video. If you are running an 8-bit, like a BL Heli S, which is BL Heli Suite, then you're in luck because that was an open source firmware and there are devs out there still playing around, still keeping it alive and free and flying and floating. So you're good to go if you have that. So here's what I've got. I've got this Mamma Jamma right here. This thing is a bass. <laughs> If you don't know what this is, this is a, I can't remember, six or seven inch. It is a just a normal FPV drone frame that I put in X-Class components. These ESCs are 90 amp ESCs, single ESCs, $100 a pop. These motors are big old motors. This flight controller and everything on board is built and designed to run at X class capacity. What does that mean? There is a PDB on board that is running a monstrous amount of amperage. This here, my friends, is a 12S quadcopter. <laughs> So if you missed that, I've got a full video on this where it will blow your mind when I punch that throttle because it really does. And the sound of this thing just freaks everybody out. I want to dive into the settings and I want to play with them some more and I want to tune my ESCs. Well, TBS Lucid, the new hottest, latest, and the greatest on the ESCs is... Alka Motor 32. They are AM32 uh, ESCs. So what am I supposed to do? I, I can't get into BL Heli 32. No, because this is new firmware. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and dive in. All you're going to need is your quadcopter. You're going to need yourself a Type-C USB. You can use a battery or, like I've told you guys before, you should own and have a variable bench power supply. If you don't have one or you haven't bought one, make one. I have a full video where I made this power supply. This power supply is amazing. I built it. I made it. I designed it. I painted it. It was fun. I'll link that video for you down in the video description. All right. In our browser, we are going to type in AM32. .ca and press enter. If you can't remember that or you didn't write it down, I'll put a link for you down in the video description. Once you've been on here once before, the real URL is am32.ca slash forward slash configurator. But I want you to see the full site before we dive in. So once you're on here, you're going to see everything about the key features, what it is, firmware release and configurations. You can download multi-ESC config tools. You've got support in the community. You can join Discord and dive in and become a part of, which is very cool. And you can also jump on their Patreon, and you should, because with BL Heli 32 gone, what do we have left? 
So head up here and right next to AM32, you're going to see that you've got downloads and in the center, you've got the configurator. And here's what happens. If you take a look up in the top right, you're going to see where you can select your device. You've got your baud rate, connect, port select. So this is kind of like your CLI prompt. It's showing what's happening and what you're doing and all the commands and all the things that are happening and they're happening by the millisecond. And that is what this is right here. So you can actually blow it up by clicking this button right here. But once you select a device, which you can do, and you get your baud right, which you can do, and you're connected and you're pressing connect and it's not working and you don't understand why, so you're going to need to come over to configurator first. So you're going to press this button and now we're heading in the right direction because it's telling us to connect the device and read settings, which you may not have paid attention. You might have just saw please connect. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect and once you connect your flight controller, you may may try to connect from here because if you notice I'll have an actual drop down if I go port select here it is I've got my brain FPV Radix 2 it's on com port 10 it's paired I'm ready I can press connect right click connect I'm not gonna press it because nothing's gonna happen you have got to power this puppy so let's do that so that's now twice you would have been fooled possibly if you're me so now we're going to power this up and don't ever do this with your props on and we're going to go boom and again power supply i'm running about 24.8 volts okay now we press connect and as you can see, everything is initializing, okay? Well, I saw that something happened. Look at this, I'm getting all sort of info. I'm sending MSP, I'm connected to my device. I'm doing good, motors one, two, three, and four. I've got my motor config. And this is why I wanted to take a minute to show you guys because now and only now, you can press read. Voila! <laughs> We are in, pilots! So, here is where the magic starts to happen. Uh, mm, mm. While we're in here, you select your ESCs by clicking on them. So that's a deselect, that's a select. So I'm gonna deselect them all, right? I now have no ESCs selected, and they are represented by these green dots. Watch, if I deselect one, I now have three. Reselect, I now have four. You can choose your protocol. I am forcing D-Shot, you really should be an auto and let it do its own thing, but I'm gonna stay in D-Shot because that's what I've done, that's what I have, that's what I like. And you can change whatever you want here. I can go like this, I can go like this, I can go like this, I can go like this. Nothing takes effect until you press this save button right here, which I'm not gonna press because I just messed up a bunch of stuff, but keep that in mind. Now you also don't wanna go changing your settings until you flash your firmware. So let me show you guys how to flash. Here is where you flash. See right here where you have a flash firmware. So you select the ESCs that you want to flash, which I, I, I recommend flashing them all. Do not flash one or two or, well, maybe you need to. I don't know. I shouldn't say that, but I recommend flashing them all together all the time. That's just my personal preference. And I am no AM32 dev by any means. <laughs> all right. So flash firmware while I've got them all selected. Now, if your ESC is fresh and new and hot, it'll be actively updated and grabbed in the target, just like Betaflight's targets. It'll be there. They'll see it. They're playing with it. They're working on it. You'll be able to, it'll auto-populate. Look at mine, auto-populated. AM32 TBS 12S, baby. And it's an F421, and this is the 2.18 hex file, okay? Let's just say yours did not auto-populate. You would not be able to click anything because they purposely blocked that off. So if you knew for sure which file you're supposed to have and it did not auto-populate, you would click ignore current layout and you do get this alert because this is dangerous and you shouldn't do this, but you may have no choice. I don't know. That's, that's on you. And now you can open this up and you can actually search and try to find your file. And there's a lot of them in here. So make sure that if you're doing this, you have the correct one and you know what you're doing. 
Now, this is done by releases because I'm connected to the internet. If you've got a local file, which means you have the firmware, you've downloaded it, let's just say off of the AM32 website because you can do that. You've downloaded the file or maybe a buddy gave you the file or maybe you're on a Patreon or uh, maybe you've got it from the devs through Discord, whatever. You can upload that file right here through local. You would just choose the file location right in here and then you'd be all set. And then lastly, you can actually flash the bootloader, which we're not gonna do. We're not getting into any of this stuff. We're just gonna click here. And as you see, I'm already on the latest firmware, but if I wasn't, or if I was having an issue, I could reflash this by clicking this, boom. And then you need to select the ones you wanna flash, one, two, three, and four, which that's what I recommend doing, is always flashing all four like we talked about. And then I would click this button and I would start my flash, okay? Now, to get out of that, I just press escaped, okay? Now, here we are. You may want to save this. So maybe all these settings are beautifully picked and selected and carefully fine-tuned by you or someone else. You can come up here to the top right and you can save this config. You just click this button, select the ones you want to save, and then hit download and it'll save it. You can then send that to your bate, or you can have him send you one, they sent you one, whoever, whatever, and then, or maybe you're having an issue and you need to get your, you know, your layout, what settings you're using out to someone and say, hey man, take a look at this, see what's going on. You would save it and send that file. Maybe they made some changes to it, tweaky, 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 and they're like, yo, I'm going to send this back to you, put it back on because now it's fixed. Well, that's where you apply a config. And you just click that, you pick the file, same as any, and then you select which ESCs you want to do it to. All right, again, to get out of that, escape. All right, just a couple things. If your motors are going the wrong way, you can just click reverse right here and then press save. You're good. Do we use this? I don't know. I mean, Betaflight does it all and you've got the wizard. I don't know. Betaflight's pretty amazing. So I don't think you'll need it, but it's there if you want to use it. All right. And you've got loads and loads of stuff. Look at this. Stuck rotor protection, stall protection, hall sensors, complimentary PWM, auto timing advanced. You've got PWM type. You've got limits like low voltage cutoff, temperature limits, current limits, Oh my God, this is great. So you can even protect your stuff. When you get to sign your start of startup, keep in mind this is not for drones. This is for crawlers, okay? And when you get to the next step down, like break on stop, this is all wing stuff. These are for wings. So don't worry about that unless you're dealing with a wing. And then lastly, you've got your servo settings. This, of course, is for RC cars and wings and planes and things like that, okay? It's basically anything without a flight controller. Well, not anything, but wings without a flight controller. Yeah, so. So that's pretty much it. There's some things to dive into. If you guys are interested, let me know. If you didn't know how to use AM32 or you wanted to buy an AM32 ESC and you didn't know, like, oh my God, well, now you don't have to worry about it. Now you can do it. Now you can update it. So I hope you guys had as much fun as I did, and I will see you on the next one. Ah!